Michael from MyRod.com. I have a question. How many of you have ever heard the phrase second gen Camaro? What it means is it's the Camaros that were built from 1970 all the way to 1981. Now, the problem I have with that phrase is, is there are two very distinct Camaros built during that time period. There are the first cars from 1970 to 1973. I call them the chrome bumper second gen Camaros because they had chrome bumpers like the Camaros before them. The 74 to 81, the last series, didn't have chrome bumpers. They had some sort of crash impact, rubber covered bumpers, and it affected the looks of the cars dramatically. Now, my personal opinion is, is the chrome bumper cars are much better looking cars. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. I have a chrome bumper Camaro behind me. Now, what is it? It's a 1973 Camaro. And uh, obviously it's got chrome bumpers, so it's a second gen chrome bumper Camaro. Now, what's really special about this particular chrome bumper Camaro is it's my favorite. It's the Rally Sport, often called the split bumper uh, Camaro, and that's what they're talking about. So the bumper is just on each half of the front end, the bumper split in two. It was unique to the Rally Sport body. And uh, I just love the look. I think it's one of the best looks to ever come out of Detroit. It just, it, well, it just speaks to me. Now this car also has some other things going for it. Not only is it the Rally Sport, which I love, it's also a factory Z28 and it's a factory LT. So the LT is unique to 1973 and it's luxury touring is the name of that package and a lot of great options come with that. We're not gonna really focus on that today, but it had the trifecta, all three options. It was a Rally Sport, it was a Z28, and it was an LT. That's a one year deal only. You could only get that in 1973 and 1973 was the last of the chrome bumper Camaros. So do you like the color? I absolutely love it. Do you know what it's called? It's called dark blue. Yeah, dark blue. So in 72 and back, Chevrolet had these magnificent romantic names for their colors on their cars. But something happened in 73. I think they put the accountant in charge of naming the colors dark blue. And my second favorite color for 73 is called dark red. So it's just gorgeous and hard to believe the paint's been on there for well over 10 years. But uh, just let's walk around and take a look at it. The, the lines on this car just wow me. When this car first came out, I was a little kid and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna own one someday. It's like the car of the future had arrived. The Camaro prior to this, the 67 through 69, those cars were the cars of the 60s. This car was the car of the 70s, the car of the future. And even today, even today, this car still looks relevant. I just think it's gorgeous. I think Chevrolet nailed it when they designed this car. Come look at the interior of this car. This is another feature that I love. Of course, this is the LT car which means it's the luxury, luxury touring, which meant you got the deluxe interior. And that's what's in here, and I, I absolutely love it. Uh, the door panels, they don't even reproduce. So fortunately for this car, they're in mint condition. But the interior in general is just very comfortable. The high back buckets, the interior is more plush in this car than a standard interior for Camaro for this year and earlier years. And in 73, the LT is loaded with additional insulation, which just makes it a quieter, more luxurious, luxurious touring sedan, or touring coupe, if you will, and that's why they call it the LT. It's just gorgeous, the instrumentation, um, all the extra nice things in this car, like the tilt, just make a big difference. Really, really like this interior. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Now, when I bought this car 10 years ago, it was bone stock, and it looked much like you see the car today, the wheels have been changed, but you know, it was a bone stock presentation, but it is anything but bone stock today. Today, well, infused into this gorgeous car are, is all the modern technology that Chevrolet would have put in the car back in the day had that technology existed. It's a resto mod and oh my, oh my. Come check out this engine. So what you're looking at is a modern Chevrolet Crate LS3, wheel with disc brakes on all four corners and vintage air, plus a lot of other stuff that I don't even have time to mention. Very, very impressive.
Now, what we could not see under the hood is the transmission. It's updated to a Tremec six-speed transmission. So what does that mean? What that means is you can pick your speed, pick your RPM. The flexibility, flexibility is incredible. So with this drivetrain, you can now do things and have an experience that just weren't possible in the factory OEM drivetrain of 1973. Now, don't get me wrong, I love bone stock cars, for sure, I love them. But I also love a very well executed resto mod like this car here. It is an extremely well executed resto mod. There are a lot of other things that have been installed in this car to bring it to a complete package, but not go too far where you lose what you originally fell in love with, which is the cool vintage vibe. Like the gauges, the gauges look very, very stock. They're Dakota digital gauges. Like everything else, they are a very superior product to the OEM original 1973 components that were in this car. So no harm, no foul. This car, as it sits, is just one of those cars that you just look for excuses to get in and go. Okay, before we go on that test drive, let me start it up so you can hear the delicious exhaust note coming from that Crate LS3. That sounds great. Man, I love the lit up Dakota, Dakota Digital gauges. They just look super cool. At nighttime, even better. You can see, and they're precise, accurate gauges. Makes a difference. Okay, gates open. We're going out very cold here. I guess I should let this thing warm up a little bit. We'll just take her easy for the moment. Okay, we will be to a higher speed road in just a second. This car feels so good, so stable. It takes these twisties back here beautifully well. That's what I love about these second gen Camaros. They just handle really nicely. And of course, this has some suspension modifications to make it handle even better. Still has its original frame, though. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the original frame on these cars. People that completely change out the frames, I understand what they're trying to accomplish, but it's not necessary to have a nice handling car. Okay, we're off the rough bricks back there. And again, I left the hangar with, it uh, looks like, on the reserve gas here, so hopefully it won't run out. day, but this is super fun. I always dreamed of building a resto mod in this platform, and uh, all these many years later, here it is. Now, as it turns out, I've got other keepers, and this car ultimately would be one of those keepers, but I've let someone talk me out of it, and what a lucky guy that guy is. He is gonna have so much fun in this car. But you gotta respect it. This is not the kind of car that you could turn your teenager loose in, or really anybody for that matter, if they don't respect and understand the power that this thing has, because it definitely has real power and it comes on quickly. So that was just 
gears. You've got six. And in those three gears, let me just put it this way, it goes very fast. And so can you just imagine if you stretch the legs on this thing in the last three gears? Well, it would end up in a place that I don't want to go. And uh, wow, yeah. Okay, we're in fourth. Woo! It's just got miles and miles of torque. So even in fourth gear, just cruising down the road at what was 55 and you get on it, it goes. I love this transmission. So you could put this thing in eventually sixth gear and be going down the interstate at 80, 85, and be just barely over double idle, which is just walking down the interstate, which there's, there's a lot to be said for that. No real wear on the engine, no real wear on you, and it's just a cross-country cruiser, or if you prefer, a streetlight to streetlight fighter that would take on all comers. these turns back here. Okay, I don't trust that I have any more gas to do much more of this, so I'm going to head back to the hangar, but I could log hours and hours in this car. Such a smooth delivery of extreme on-demand power. I love it. You can see and understand why so many guys are converting to LSs. Those that boohoo that, for whatever reason, I don't get. But if they ever get behind the wheel of a well-done LS conversion, they'll become believers. Again, as I said earlier in this video, I like stock cars. I do. But the thrill. The thrill is the well sorted out resto mod. And this is a well sorted out resto mod that will go places that a bone stock car will never go. Just the way it is. Well, I hope you like the video. If you like the video, click like, ring the bell, subscribe to our channel. All these things help my son and I. If you'd like to see more videos, that thing helps for us. Also, go to our website, myrod.com, and check out some of the cool cars that my son and I search out and find. We only buy the unusual, uh, the super desirable, high quality examples, and uh, we may end up with something that you'll fall deeply in love with. Well, thanks for checking out the video, and uh, adios.